everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Healthy Her. Today we have Cassie Brown, our wellness coach for our practice, joining us today. Welcome back, Cassie. Thank you so much. <laughs> so if you haven't uh, tuned in and listened to our last episode, Cassie and I talked about insulin and blood sugar spikes and some really practical tips of what you can do to help mitigate those spikes. And so today we're going to talk about, again, just some practical tips about what to do when you're trying to be healthy, maybe trying to lose weight, but food is everywhere and what to do when you go out to restaurants and eating in social or eating out in social situations. Oh, yes. This is especially coming off the phone. guys but sometimes when I'm out to eat I'm like look I'm out to eat I'm here with my friends I'm here with my family it's kind of a special occasion even though these special occasions are once or twice a week <laughs> um, I deserve it so I'm gonna eat the bread let's get an appetizer let's get cocktails let's get dessert and I'm sure I'm not alone with with that mentality you're not it i'm included <laughs> if you haven't listened to the last episode we give really really good tips on if you do go out to eat and, and food order and how to kind of help you stay on track with that um but there's two things i always um tell our patients and that's to first either plan or prepare or indulge and be okay with it you know just be aware of it so the first one's planning and preparing so whatever your goal is you know think about the triggers the environment you know are you going to eat before going somewhere are you going to have somebody hold you accountable if you go out you know or are you going to you know do like I said or like we mentioned in the last um, episode, uh, are you going to implement some food order, or eat health? like whatever that is, right? And if you are going out often, that's something to really think about because these, you know, outings can add up. Like you said, Dr. Brenner, it can be like, oh my gosh, I ate out way too much this week and it can come back. The other option, like I said, is to just be okay with it. You know, having such restriction around living is not living. And as I mentioned in the last episode, I would rather have my patients enjoy and indulge in a piece of cake or dessert and be happy. And instead of being stressed and miserable eating a salad, because that salad is not going to serve you or even digest well at that time. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that you say that, um, is you don't always have to be good. Um, and, oh. you know, my husband and I, our anniversary is actually coming up this week. And um, now that our kids have gotten older, we, the last couple of years have gone on an anniversary trip. So we are actually going on an anniversary trip um, on Thursday. And so um, I'm actually going to take off my continuous glucose monitor and uh, I plan on going on vacation and you know, I'm not going to really worry about it. Now, still, when I go on vacation, I'm still pretty good, um, but I will indulge. And um, we're, we're going on a cruise and there's going to be a chef. And so I'm sure I will be having cocktails and desserts and, and I'm not going to worry about it. But hence this past weekend, uh, my daughter was going back to college. So we went out to dinner as a family a couple times. The Bengals had some games that we went to, but in preparation for my vacation coming up, I'm like, I'm not going to indulge in these Bengals parties and going out to eat. I picked restaurants where I knew I could have pretty good, healthy choices there because I know on my trip that I'm going to indulge more. So I love that you agree that it's okay to indulge periodically. Yeah, because if you're, I mean, there's something called um, orthorexia, where it's like you are just stressed and have anxiety around all things, you know, just eating healthy. And then that's not healthy, you know, that suppresses you and your enjoyment and fulfillment of life. And the important thing to remember is when you start your journey, wherever that is, as you start, and I don't know if you felt this, doctor, I'm sure you have. Um, is as you start 
making healthier decisions and you feel better and you know what works for you that cause and effect around that awareness it's almost like sometimes you're like okay you don't need to indulge in all that because you know how you're going to feel after and you're like mm, I'm okay because that's really gonna send me in the spiral or I'm gonna get some sort of reaction and so there's a healthy way to meet in the middle and this it's better as you, you know, continue on your journey and figuring out what works for you. Yeah. So for me, I found that like looking at the menu ahead of time and making sure that, especially when you have a, you know, when I'm picking for my family and we're going to go where I want to go. So it's easy with my family. So, um, but picking a restaurant where I know they have choices of what works for what kind of food I'm looking for. So planning and preparing, especially travel, like if you have some autonomy or control over that situation, prepare yourself before you get there. So you just know, so you're not sitting there. Oh my gosh, I need to rush and just get something. I'll just have what you're having or whatever that looks like. And then again, like I mentioned, that food order is everything. So if you have your cocktails or whatever, like, can you have some, a handful of nuts or um, some avocado on toast before you have the coffee. I mean, there's ways to still enjoy and not feel that the effect afterwards. What do you look for when you're looking at like, well, where should we go to restaurants? Anything specific that you're looking for? Yeah, I, I'm really, a, in this, I've worked up to this Dr. Brenner. So like a lot of farm to table, I see if they have a lot of a la carte options so like um, steamed veggies, roasted veggies, maybe soups or salads. Um, what else? I oh. tend to find like Thai places or um, Asian places like have a little bit more healthier options or a place that has good salads. Like um, I've also recently been... Um, ordering off the menu but bringing my own homemade dressing so it doesn't have just the added garbage that I don't know what's in it yeah like do not care what people think bring what you need like I'll take supplements like we were talking about ACV like I'll take my little thing and or vial or whatever and on the go and do what works for you and be open and have a community uh uh a dialogue with the waiter like what is in this because a lot of the times you you know communicate what you need or what you're looking for too and um it's funny and you'll it, it'll reveal the restaurants because I went to gosh where was it? a few years ago I forgot what restaurant it was but I was trying to um kind of switch my toppings around on the pizza and they're like everything we have is frozen like so I'm like wait a minute so I can go to the grocery store and just do the same thing why did I come here I didn't, yeah. I'm just thinking that you know so it'll reveal a lot about the restaurant too but be open about what you need if you want something cooked in something else or you want to eliminate something um obviously be, be kind about it <laughs> politely ask if they can do it but more times than not nowadays, it's so common to have alternatives. So, you know, speak up. And if that restaurant is able to accommodate you, I think it's great. Yeah. Especially, you know, when I, I started working with you, Cassie, and tracking my macros, I found that I, again, I thought I was eating pretty healthy, but the amount of fat that I was eating just blew me away before I was tracking my my food intake. So sometimes those fat calories can, can really add up. So, um, even though olive oil is a healthy oil, um, like, or eggs, like also, you know, um, could be a health food, but the fat in those two things was, was surprising. So that's why, like, if you need to limit fats of bringing your own um, salad dressing, like that maybe just has some vinegar or some other things. Um, or, um, like, I don't know. I just can't eat a plain baked potato. Like in the old me would love to slather it with butter and sour cream, but I recently discovered nutritional yeast, which I'm like, where has this been my whole life? Oh gosh, you recently discovered yes. it? Yes. I'm like, where has this been my whole life? Like, Isn't it great? Yes. Yeah, 
uh, sorry, on the nutritional yeast, like eat my son, we sometimes I'll make him, if it's not homemade mac and cheese, I'll use like the Amy's organic. And even that, like I finesse it. So it's healthier for him. Like I'll use a little bit of the sauce, but I'll put nutritional yeast in there with some like peas or spinach and just, you know, the whole question, like, how can I make this better? What can I add to this to, you know, but yeah, nutritional yeast. Oh, congratulations. Dr. Yes. <laughs> So since I just discovered it, I've gone to a restaurant before and I ordered a plain baked potato and I brought with me nutritional yeast, which tastes like cheese and added that to my potato and then just ordered their salad, um, you know, and picked and choose with what I wanted. And then I brought my own homemade um, uh, dressing. So hack 101 there. Like I can imagine like I'm, I want to do that now, like baked potato nutritional yeast with like some maybe like chives on there or like creamed, healthier cream spinach or something. Oh my gosh, you can do yeah. so much. So since I just discovered it, what else do you use nutritional yeast for? I make a, um, like, like a fake cheese sauce that I put on a lot of vegetables with, um, I think it's nutritional yeast, Dijon mustard, um, some soaked cashews and I think some lemon juice and put it in my Nutribullet and put it over vegetables. And it is just delish. There you have it. That's what I do with my macaroni and cheese. I'll use nutritional yeast. Where else do I use it? Oh gosh. I, I, I make an amazing pesto. I use nutritional yeast in pesto. Um, in pasta bakes, but like you said, it's like a cheese sauce, but I'll use it in pasta bakes. Nacho cheese sauce, if you want to use that cheese sauce for nachos. Um, I put it over my salad. Just sprinkle it over my salad. Over your salad. Um, again, you don't have to manipulate it too much. You can literally sprinkle it over, sprinkle it over your vegetables, like steam yeah. the veggie. Um, or if you want to do like a toast. I haven't done it on bread actually, but I'm thinking like, like a toasted bagel or a piece of bread or something, maybe cheesy bread. Yeah. When maybe I first I started working with you guys, I started with Amanda. I'm like, um, okay, normally when I make bread or toast, I put butter on it. And I'm like, what do you do? She's like, well, I never use butter. I'm like, well, what do you put on toast then? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I love olive oil on toast. And have you had the everything but the bagel seasoning? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you sprinkle it on there. But there's also Miyokonos. They have a butter made from coconut oil, which asterisk on that. Not a lot of coconut oil. It has a lot of saturated fat in it. Um, just a little bit of that on it. It tastes just like butter. It's really, really amazing. But um, what else? That for me on? was a hard habit to get over. But um, I've made my own jelly with... Um, just frozen fruit and um, chia seeds just cooked and it makes its own jelly. Yeah. Um, no, do you, have you tried chia seed porridge where if you cook it just like oatmeal on a stove, on the stove and then add in your fruit or, you know, hmm. a little drop of stevia or a little bit of maple syrup, just depending on that and just cinnamon and some nuts in there. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what, uh, back to eating out at restaurants, those are the tips that I do when I go out to eat. When I go to fast food, I haven't found anything as good as Chipotle. What about you? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fast food person. I think LA living there, my husband's from there, it really spoiled us because there's a lot of, you know, clean eating place. I mean, they're everywhere, right? So fast food, my favorite yeah, I can't think of anything. I'm not a fast food person either, but if you're happy to be on the road, I can't think of anything as good as there's, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, there's Maybe salad. Chick-fil-A. There's some salads and some just non-breaded grilled chicken nugget type things or chicken yeah. pieces. Yeah, um, and then there's a place called Salad and Go out here. It's just like a fast food salad place. And so that's really good. Um, and then you can turn that salad into a wrap if you want. But there aren't any, I mean, there's like little hacks you can make at fast food restaurants, but there's none of my favorites, you know, just yeah. like you said, grilled chicken, see if, 
you know, if you're having a burger, ha have them double up on the lettuce on there and maybe, I mean, eat the bun, you know, but if you're feeling like, oh, let me not have the top bun, you know, pack on the lettuce and have the bottom bun. I mean, there's like different hacks. If oh, you let me back up. Jimmy John's is a, a sandwich place here and they actually do make a, um, like a lettuce wrap where you don't have to get the bun, but you could just get the meat and veggies in a lettuce wrap. So again, not my favorite, but, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm a, I'm different though. If I'm going to eat a burger, I'm going to eat the burger. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, look, I'm going, I'm getting a burger. Yeah, I'm going to my... eat a burger and fries and probably a beer to go with it. If I'm, I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to have like my veggies and salad first. Right. But then I'm just going to enjoy it. Like, yeah. What about when you go to somebody's house for a party? Any tips there? Because typically party foods are just all the, the breads and dips and chips and things yeah. like that yeah so we've done this a lot like my husband and I luckily we're on like the same well you know we eat the same and so we always you know either eat before or just eat after and just understand that you know this is their home they're enjoying it and then if they have anything that we do eat there just enjoy it um yeah. if it's often like the holidays and stuff the same applies if they're asking for like a potluck situation just bring something that you can enjoy maybe a couple things you can enjoy um but really ultimately just know that it is in your control I think we release some of that like oh, I'm going here I don't have anything to eat I don't know what to eat we'll just eat before or after and and still enjoy it because it's not just about the food the gathering right right where I find that is, is like, you know, my kids are involved in sports. So a lot of like sport meals of like is pizza. Um, and so exactly. I'm like, okay, I'm going to eat before or we're, my husband and I are going to go eat afterwards or um, like bringing my own salad or bringing my own food. Or again, if it's a party, I, I couldn't agree more of like a lot, a lot of parties nowadays, people ask you to bring a dish. And so try to bring a dish that's that's healthy that that I'm gonna eat so yeah Dr. Britton I think the sometimes I think it's the mental piece of it about caring what people think you know we have to feel the need to explain ourselves and things and I think that's really the bottleneck it's not necessarily like planning and stuff before it's just it's really navigating the judgment people may have or conversation that you don't want to have because you, you know, you're going on this journey. And so it's really just remembering to advocate for yourself. And at the end of the day, this is your journey. So wherever you are, whatever you need to do to prepare yourself and feel comfortable, you have the right to do that. So, yeah. And, and I think as the world becomes healthier, those kinds of connotations are getting, getting less and less. Um, I don't know. I've never really given a shit what people think of me as far as those things. So, um, that no, was hard. I hear all the time. Like when I was in, L I remember I was in, uh, yeah, I was in LA and one of my girlfriends, she had some outlandish order and they didn't bat an eye. They're like, we hear the craziest things. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm like, no, I'll just have whatever you know, it was on the menu, but nowadays people hear all the time. There's so many different preferences and sensitivities and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Same thing with working out. Like I, you know, when I go to my kids sporting events, when you're at a basketball gym all day long or a volleyball gym all day long, like I'll like go find a little corner by myself and do a little workout with body exercises, just, you know, all by myself and my kids are mortified I'm like mom why do you have to do that like that's so embarrassing I'm, like, I'm teaching my son young because I'm never like I'll get up and my son notices and he's little so he'll understand but I'll walk the gym or people will be like do you want to sit down I'm like no I'm fine with standing like I just I'm tired of sitting I'll do it on planes like I bring my little exercise bands and you know do some movement on the plane um and again, this isn't for everybody. Find what works for you. But oh yeah, I've brought exercise bands and did those in the airport before too. Also, kids mortified. I'm like, yeah. 
And I'm like, look, I do not care what one person here thinks of me. So no, kudos to you though. I commend you because they'll realize they'll get to an age where they're like, okay, that makes sense. Like I'm like, yeah, I mean, just as this week when we're going on our trip, we have a three hour layover in Atlanta. Like, which reminds oh, me, I'm gonna pack oh. my exercise bands. Like Oh, Atlanta's huge too. Oh, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get some exercise in that three hours. I'm surprised they don't have like a little boutique area gym in there. I know, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, because I thought of that. I'm like, they probably don't do that because people probably sweat and then get on a plane and then they smell. That you have those people, those people, and the people who eat fish on the plane. Uh, yeah. I yeah open up sardines Dr. Brenner and I was like it's great like I commend you you know that's a great food or a snack but on the plane yeah yeah but was- if you're not comfortable doing getting out the bands or doing burpees or lunges in the airport like there's a ton of walking you can do tons walk Sit. Yeah. I mean, no one's gonna. Oh, maybe they will notice you getting up and down from a chair. Just <laughs> discreetly squat and get up and walk around. Come see it up. But yeah, it's really just. Just. I know it's easier said than done, but not caring what people think and doing what works for you because their opinion is. And who knows? Maybe somebody will be inspired by that. Maybe they're embarrassed to do something, and they see somebody else, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna yeah. do it." Now. So. We could start a revolution. Exactly. Exercising in public and not being embarrassed. I need to pitch that idea to the airport, though. You need to have a little and it re- require them to shower or have wipes or something. I'm surprised they don't have them in the lounges, too, like little stretch areas or I something. I know. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. But anyway. Well, thanks for all these great tips. Oh, you're so welcome. Likewise. I love working with you as a patient. I know our patients love working with you too. So you have these tips and lots more up your sleeve um, in order to help people be well. Practically. Practically. Really, right? Thank you, yeah. Dr. Brennan. Thanks for joining us, Kathy. Thank you for listening to this episode of Healthy Her. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Go to www.dramybrenner.com to learn more. This podcast is for general information only and does not constitute as medical advice, the practice of medicine, nursing or other healthcare services. No patient-physician relationship is formed. The information in the podcast and any references, material or links are at the sole discretion of the listener and not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Listeners should not delay or disregard obtaining medical advice for any medical issues or diagnoses that they may have and should seek medical advice from their healthcare provider for any such conditions.